Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Unplugged Woodworkers podcast. So what have I been up to? Um, I have been continuing with a coffee table I've been making. Um, that's just, uh, I've got actually two to make here. One of them's kind of like a retro style, uh, modern sort of thing. And the other one's a Japanese inspired one. So I have actually done a video, not not on the making of it, but I've actually done a video of um, one of the joints uh, for the legs. It's a it's a it's a round mortars and tenon joint, but it's actually got um, angled shoulders on it. So the actual sight line on the bottom of the carcass, if you like, is actually at forty five degrees, and the legs are uh, rake are out at. 15 degrees um so obviously you've 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 got to have the angle on the um on the shoulders if you like yeah so this isn't it's not typically what you would see you know in the likes of a windsor chair or a welsh stick chair anything like that there's actually shoulders cutting the shoulders marry up to the to the underside of the caucus at the angle uh this does actually lend some extra support to it and I, I quite like it in that sense because it does help, help to strengthen the joint um, especially with the the bottom piece uh, being so thin because the bottom piece is only like um, it's like an inch so you know typically when you do, do conical tenons or, or even round tenons it is it is usually like a lot a lot thicker basically you know it's any it's usually anywhere from like you know an inch and a half, two inch, three inch type of thing. That's what you tend to see. But uh, this is only one inch, so obviously having the shoulders, um, you know, hitting the underside of the caucus does does help to strengthen it up. This is going to be wedged as well, so I just thought it was interesting. So I've done a video, so there'll be a link um, in the description, as with everything else um, of my contents. Um, so it'll be the link for my YouTube channel if you want to check it out, that is. So what impressed me this week? So I was scrolling through Instagram and I came across a post um, and it was it was basically saying how to make a Viking um, ruler. So the post I was um, Chad Lee May and I believe... Um, had done a YouTube video on this, um, so the the rule itself it it caught me eye just because it was kind of easy to read and it hasn't got any numbers or anything on it. It's um, it's actually an imperial, um, so that's that's like inches, inches and fractions for anyone that doesn't know what imperial is. Uh, most of you will. So it's. It's just, it's so easy to read. I mean, obviously Chad states in the post, you know, he says the thing that struck us is that it's so easy to um, yeah, to, to read the ruler. So sometimes it can be a little bit tricky when you're kind of reading, um, you know, um, foot, inches, you know, and then going into the fractions. It's more when you're going into the fractions where, where you struggle, well, where I struggle anyway, you know, when you're trying to count up all the, um, you know, the six teams or the eighths or you know, or whatever, do you know what I mean? By the t- for me, it's it's easy to to see the obviously the inch, the half inch, the quarter inch. After the quarter inch, and then you know, my eyes aren't great to start with, but but even if your eyes are okay, I think there is a lot of people that do struggle to to read. You know, so obviously, and then you're going into an eighth. 16 for 30 seconds, so on and so on. Um, so the way this the way this rule is set out is it's kind of like it's more like boxes, if you like. It's it's quite clever the way it's done. I, d- I don't know if I've seen this before. I want to say I have, but I cannot 100%. I cannot say it, but the the way it's being done, obviously the squares. So you've got you've got like one one big like square, obviously for the inch. And then there's a square for the, um, uh, sorry, two squares for the half inch, and um, four squares for the for the quarter inch. So basically, 
it's been marked out with a marking knife, all the measurements, uh, you know, the lines going down, but it's also been marked along the ruler, um, uh, long ways, if you like, how, how, how would that be, is that like perpendicular to the edge, am I saying that right? So basically there would be lines running along the whole length, so obviously you would have a, a line going along the edge for your, your eighth of an inch, then the quarter of an inch, and then the half inch, then the inch. So you kind of, when you've got those lines running along the length of it, and then obviously you've got your lines um, running a, running 90 degrees to to the ruler itself, which are your measurement uh, your measurement lines, it kind of, it just creates like a lot of boxes. So it, I'm probably making it sound very complicated, but it's not. And if you go and check the check the post out, I will obviously will leave a link to this. But if you go and uh, check uh, Chad's post out, you'll see exactly what I mean. It is really easy to read it. Um, another thing, it didn't have any numbers on. It had it had a cross at the centre point, which is six inches. Um, obviously, the the ruler was uh, twelve inches long, and then it had a it had a like a, a diagonal slash at three inches and a diagonal slash at nine inches so i mean it, it's it's so so simple you know it's like you see the cross you know that's six inches obviously you see the slash to the to the left of the of the center piece cross you know that's three inches and obviously the opposite way you know that's nine inches so it's 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 very very simple, but it's it really impressed impressed us. Um, I think I'm going to incorporate it into me commonality ruler. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, I built this commonality ruler ages and ages ago. Um, obviously using using a chair and then and you know I think I think it's it's evolved. It's already evolved a couple of times, but I think the next time I make, I'm going to probably make it a little bit longer, a little bit wider. Um, take a few things away, add a few things. So, I think I'm going to incorporate that just for the simplicity of it. It's it's really really good. Yeah, uh, like I said, I'll leave a I'll leave a link if you want to go in there, ch check uh, Chad's post out or give him a follow. Um, yeah, so I'll leave a post there. Uh, sorry, I'll leave a link for that. Go and check them out. Okay, so today is titled "How Accurate Do You Need to Be." So, I was actually when I was actually making um, the joints for the for the table um, I'm making at the moment. I kind of I looked at the leg itself, and I looked, you know, I looked at the end grain. You know, I, I don't know why. I think I just picked it up and I looked at it, and it was, and it's not square. You know, it's 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 not badly out of square, but it's enough to see it's. If you look at the um, the picture, uh, the thumbnail picture for this podcast uh, episode, you'll you'll see what I mean. It's it's not bad, bad, but it's it is you know you can see it. But I kind of laughed at it, um, kind of because I la I laughed because probably two re reasons. Like one, I laughed because it's like not square, and I kind of laughed, kind of thinking that once upon a time I would have actually made that square. You know, like you know, like. 100% square but it's not needed so obviously it's this is obviously where the uh, where this episode come from it's like how accurate do you really need to be so with with the leg like being out of square um it doesn't really make a difference simply because those those legs are going to be um hex, hexagonal but also going to be tapered so it's, there was no, I wasn't going to gain anything from it um, by planning them, you know, a hundred percent square. Basically, when I when I was prepping the stock, I just cleaned my saw marks up. That was it, you know, kind of clean clean my saw marks up and and just eyed it very quickly. You know, I don't even think I lifted the thing up. I just planed it and you know, with it lying on the bench, and I thought, yeah, that looks okay. You know, that, that was it. Um, but as I said, I was gonna, I wasn't going to gain anything by it, 
because obviously the corners are going to be removed and it's going to be tapered, so you know it's going to have to be playing the game. But it's ironic though because if you have, if you if you went back like well, I don't know maybe three, four, five year ago, as I said, I would have played that like a hundred percent square. But it's laughable now because it's it's just I know there's no need for it. Where people still do things like that, you know. I mean, if you really want to do something like that, I mean, you know, it might be practice for you, but, you know, I, I, as I keep on saying, me being a, a, a hand tool woodworker, um, I do try to make things, like, quickly. Um, I don't... I'm not saying I try to rush things, I just... I try to... You know, I try to do things with efficiency. And, you know, you know, back in the day, you know, when you had these guys, you know... Uh, working in the factory, they were probably under a lot of pressure to produce a piece of furniture in a day or a couple of days, you know. So, I think, I think they would have done these sorts of things. You know, it's, some of this is evident when you look at the um, the inside of um, you know carcasses. Uh, you know, you can see um, you can see harsh plane marks and everything. You know, they haven't took the time to, you know, um, pl- plane it all nice and flat. Ironically, this is something else I used to do, like on the inside of something, you know, like just your drawers where someone would, would uh, not not the drawer itself, but the carcass section where the drawer fits into, you know, uh, anything like that, I would, you know, would make sure it was nice and square and flat and sanded down and nice and smooth. And then, you know, just one day it dawned on us, why am I doing this? It's like, no one's ever going to see it. No one's ever going to touch it. <laughs> why am I doing it you know so like things like that you just don't have to be that accurate you know in that sense it's the same with dovetails some some people um, myself included at least I used to do this say say we've got a, a rail and we're going to do a dovetail at the end of it um, you know it might be what maybe 75 millimetres um you know, maybe fifty millimeters, something like that. Um, you know, you might be only putting like uh, two tails on the board. So, what I used to do and what I still see people doing is they'll actually they'll actually cut the board at the end. They'll uh, pass it through a they'll pass it through like a you know a shooting board. Get the get the edge all nice and um, square. They'll cut the dovetails, um, obviously fit the board, and then they'll have to plane the end grain again. So that's something I stopped doing. So what what I started doing, um, I do go between these two techniques. Um, sometimes I have got to um, plane the end grain, depending on how I want to mark it out. Some sometimes you have got to do it for for the accuracy, or or at least I believe you you have to. So the 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 on the on a sh- on a shorter board, just say what I've just been discussing there, like two inches. I typically wouldn't clean up the end grain. As I said, once you put the board together, um, you're gonna have to play in the end grain anyway. I mean, even if you try to get those um, dovetails flush, because you're using a chisel, you'll nearly always move the move the the knife wall back. It's just it just happens. It's one of those things. So, you know, something like that. It's like again having that dawn on us. It's like why am I, why am I playing in this twice when I just have to play in it once? You know. So when you are cutting something like that and that. You know something in that um, width, you know, fit like fifty uh, millimeters or, or even a little bit more. Your cuts will tend to be quite square, or at least minor. Um, so, like I say, for that I just wouldn't bother because I wouldn't use a mark a marking gauge to mark out for the shoulder line. I would use a square and a knife, and that's how I would do the shoulder line. So that basically kind of means I wouldn't have to. I've got no need for uh, to play in the edge because I don't have to have the edge, the end grain, um, nice and square for for the shoulder of the the marking gauge, uh, the marking knife gauge to to basically mark out. So that's not an issue. However, with the 
uh, wider boards. Um, funnily enough, the table um, that did have to be plain like that. But if you were gluing multiple boards up for dovetails, I would still pl- like end grain uh, playing the ends of these uh, and get them square. Uh, that's just so I can use the marking gauge. I find on b- bigger boards like that, I personally think you're, you're better off just taking a little bit extra time and using the marking knife just to get all your, your shoulders, you know, nice and crisp. I mean, obviously, yeah, you could argue, you could say, you know, you can do, um, you know, you could use use a square and use a ruler. And, you know, so, sometimes in the in the past, at least, I have done that, but now I do just tend to use the marking gauge on, like, you know, when it's, you know, three and four boards glued together, five boards, whatever. It's, uh, I just, I just think it's more accurate that way, you know, so in this particular case, what I'm explaining, you do have to be that much more accurate, but obviously lending lend, lend, lend itself to, uh, to the idea to the short, the shorter boards, you know, I don't believe you have to do it because obviously you can use a square and the square is going to cover the full, um, you know, the full board. That's just my opinion on it anyway. Sticking with the shorter rails or, or the, or the not-so-wide uh, board sections, there's, there's actually, I, I kind of do the same thing, not in the sense of a dovetail, but... In the sense of when I'm making legs, uh, I've talked about this uh, in the past uh, when I've got these like kind of retro TV uh, like stands that used to be quite good sellers, and the legs the legs are quite like uh, like squarey. So basically, they're they're an inch in thickness. The they're about eighty millimeters in width. And you know they just angle they angle down again. I think they're like about ten degrees. So the bottom of the legs um, cut it, um, you know, ten degrees or or eighty degrees roller, whichever way you want to look at it. But as what I tend to do with that as well, I'll tend to literally just cut it. Um, I won't use a marking knife again. If you go back X amount of years, I would. I would literally, you know, mark it out with a marking knife, create a create a value with my chisel, and then cut it with a saw. So I don't tend to do that now. What I what I do is I just I literally cut it. And as I said before, me on on shorter reels like that, me me um, me saw cuts tend to be quite good. Um, obviously, if you put a square at them, they're not a hundred percent square, um, but I don't tend to worry about it. So, as what I'll do, I always put a chamfer, a chamfer around the leg anyway on all the corners of the leg. So by the time I put a chamfer on either side of um, you know the leg itself, you you, you would you would never ever know it's it's not it's not like like a hundred percent ninety degrees. Obviously, the the less the less of the leg at the bottom that's making contact with with the floor it's you know it's 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 harder to see if if that makes sense um and you know i've i've kind of been doing that for a while now it's like i just i just don't see the point in doing it i mean it's the same with it's even it's the same with eggs and stuff if i'm making a um you know, just like some sort of a chair or, you know, anywhere where I've got a level of feet and cut them, I kind of, I'll cut them and it's just like, I know a lot of people tend to get a small plane and plane them. Um, I won't tend to plane them. Uh, obviously, after I've leveled them and I've cut them, um, I'll put I'll put the, whatever it is, if it's a chair or a table, I'll put it back on the, the, the flat surface and if I'm happy with it, it if it's not rocking, uh, that's it. Like literally, you know, I don't see the point in removing the saw marks. You know, I think, I think a lot of people, you know, think you kind of have to. And same again. By the time you've put the, you know, by the time you've put the um, the chamfers round the bottom, which you should always do on all your legs anyway, because this does like stop it there, uh, the wood from uh, splitting. 
you know when you're pulling it around sometimes it's the the edges can split out uh, you know when um, furniture's getting dragged around you know especially the likes of chairs things like that so uh, yeah that's something else that I that I do or all I don't do okay so playing on the edge of boards um, again it's like you don't have to be that accurate if it's if it's the if it's the end of you know say uh, you know kind of like a like a coffee table you know for instance I mean the the table that I'm making at the moment it's 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 like five boards are glued up basically so you've created one panel if you like so at the at the end of each panel it's that's it's the design is it's kind of you've got a top and a bottom obviously two sides so you're creating like a little shelf underneath if you like it's it's kind of like a like a bit of a box design if you like um you know and that can be you know to situate there uh, you can situate your, your your newspapers and and whatever else underneath their, their laptops and mobile phones whatever so you've got your two edges obviously that are v v like visible so same again i, d I don't I never feel like the need to make those a hundred percent square. Don't get us wrong. I'll you know I'll play in them and and you are you are quite square, but I don't tend to like you know be going over and over and over again. You know I'm checking religiously uh, with me square and stuff like that. Obviously, this is a totally different kettle of fish when I was you know prepping the boards for glue up. Obviously, all these edges were nice and square, you know. So, it's, it's, it's. I'm kind of just trying to differentiate, it's like the, you know, the need for accuracy when in when you can't do it with things like this. So, obviously, everyone's gonna grasp grasp this, you know. When I say they've got to be nice and crisp when you're gluing them up, um, otherwise, you're not gonna get a nice glue line, basically. Whereas when it's on the outside. You, you can kind of get away with a little bit if you want. You wouldn't have to be so meticulous, you know, when you're, uh, when you're edge playing. Sometimes you can just get that piece of wood and you can be, and you can be like playing in the end of it. And for some reason, it just, it just will not go square. It's just like every now and again, it just happens. I don't know if it's just me having a bad day or something like that. It, it very well may be, but... Um, you know, some days it's just like you've got to just go over and over and over the piece again, you know, just to try and get it square. You know, you, you get, you're kind of getting it so, so close, but it's it's still not right. I mean, and you see, when you are doing that, but when it's the end, the edge of it, you know, and you're not meeting anything, there's, you know, there's no glue up or no joinery, I think, you know, you can get away you know, you don't have to be that accurate on the edge. And, and, and this is what I do. So bearing in mind that there is actually a chamfer, you know, that goes that goes onto these edges, you know. So again, that t that takes it away, that kind of like, it's not, it's, I'm, I don't want to say hiding it because I'm making it sound worse, worse than it is. I'm making it sound like you shouldn't do it. You're not kind of hiding it, but... By the time you've got the chamfer on, no one would be none the wiser. You know, you would you would literally have to get the square out to, you know, to see it, that it's not square. But even though you've removed some of the material from that edge because you've created a chamfer, it would even be hard to see it's it's not square anyway. Even if you were using it uh, using a square. So that kind of leads us into the next one, like. Um, chamfers, like kind of, how accurate do you really need to be with chamfers? I mean, for me now, it's not very often that I will more out for a chamfer. The only time I do tend to more out for a chamfer if it's like a large chamfer, you know, like a re like a really large chamfer. You know, it's it's you know if that's like part like key like a key part of the design. You know, if I'm kind of doing it so it stands out um but 
generally, if I'm just doing a chamfer, I won't mark out for it. I mean, I've, I've spoke about this before. I'll, I'll literally put me playing on, on the piece and just me number four Baileys and just start playing. And what I do do is I'll count me, um, me strokes. So if it's on the, if it's running with the grain, you know, just for argument's sake, let's just say it might be 10 strokes. So I'll do 10 strokes. Um, but on the end grain section, it's usually a little bit less. Um, you know, so how I would normally do it, I would normally do the end grain first, you know, so let's say for argument, say that's 10, that's 10 strokes. So when I come to do the the long the long grain or with the grain rather that might be you know that might be 12 or 13 or 14 strokes um but as what i'll do as i'm going um along you know when i at the corner where the two chamfers meet you can you basically just marry it in with a plane every stroke as you start getting closer you'll see that but like a rule of thumb i just count the strokes you know in my head as i'm doing it um, you know, obviously, this is just a lot faster. I know there's people out there who will probably argue with us and say, well, well, it would only take two minutes to mark your lines out. And it's like, yeah, yeah I suppose you could. You know, but uh, I just... I, I'm not even going to say I'm lazy. I mean, to be honest, I just don't think... Like, some things just aren't necessary. As I said before, if it's going to be a big chamfer, I think, yeah, you need to be... You need to have accurate markings on it, you know, to get that chamfer. Um. Yeah. So, I think that's. I think that's just about it for today, guys. A bit of a short one today. Um. But yeah, let us know what you want to hear. Um. Like I said, leave a comment. Um. Send us an email. Um. Yeah. I think that's it. So until the next time, uh, I'll speak to you guys later.